All right, we are back at it again. This is going to be a video about understanding mean absolute deviation. This is um, a, a little short video that's going to be fairly self-explanatory, nothing um, um, too hard. Again, a measure of center is going to be a single number which is used to describe a data set. One measure of center, as we know, is the mean, also known as the average, which is the sum of the data values divided by the number of data values in a set. So basically, again, if I have the number 1, 2, and 3, I have three data values. I'm going to add those up, then divide by 3, which is giving me my mean. A measure of variability is going to be a single number used to describe the spread of a data set. Now, spread is another word for range, basically the highest value minus the lowest value, which will give you your spread, or also known as your range. The measure of variability is going to be, um, or one measure of variability is going to be the mean, absolute deviation, also known as the acronym MAD, which is going to be the mean distance between each data value and the mean of the data set. So, you might ask yourself, what does that mean, Mr. Moore? So basically, I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what it means, and that would be 8.11b. Now, 8.11b indicates that we're going to find uh, um, the measure of the average distance from a mean using a data set of no more than 10 data points. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. All right. Now that I've switched back over to my viewer, 8.11b is what I'm going to write here for my teaks. Okay. Now, we're going to look at an example that deals with a set of data so I'm going to go ahead and switch over also to what we have here in terms of our data. Okay, so we have the data represents the height and feet of various buildings. Find the mean absolute deviation for each data set. So I know that I have the data points 60, 58, 54, 56, 63, 65, 62, 59, 56, and 58. Now I had a question in class today. Do we have to actually put this in order from least to greatest as we would with a lot of the other um, uh, measures of central tendency in order to calculate them properly? And the answer is no at this point. We do not have to do that. Okay, so first thing, as you see there, it says to go ahead and calculate your mean. We're going to round to the nearest whole number. So what I'm going to do on my calculator and through the, the power of YouTube, once I add up all of those numbers, I know that my total is going to be 449, okay? So if I back over to my uh, data point, what I'm going to see at this point is that I've written them all out. Um, I want to go ahead and add all of these up, okay? So when I get to my total, will be 591. Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point is I am going to write out my total. I have 591. Okay, so 591, if I uh, mark over this, just so you guys can see a little bit better, I made a little bit of a mistake. 591, okay, is the total. Of my 10 data points, again, I have uh, 10 there. I'm going to divide it by 10 to find my average, which is going to come out to be 59.1. Now, if I wanted to round that to the nearest whole number, which a lot of time is what they make us do, round to the nearest whole number, and I'll abbreviate number, okay? That's going to give me an approximation of my mean of approximately 59. Okay, now I want to take all of my data points. I'm going to make a bit of a chart here. Okay, so I have my 10 data points. Okay, one, two, five, one, two. Okay, there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now in this second step, what I want to do is I want to find the distance, if I were to think about a number line, from each one of these numbers, okay? So the distance from each one of those numbers is going to be, um, so again, if I'm finding the distance from 59 for 60, it'll be 1. From 58, uh, 1. From 54, how many? 5. From 56 is going to be 3. From 63 is going to be 4. From 65 is going to be 6. From 62 is going to be 3. From 59, 0, of course. 56 is going to be 3 again. And from 58, it will be 1. 
So what I need to do at this point is I need to get the total of all of these numbers, okay? That is going to be a total of 27. So once I have a total of 27, to find my mean absolute deviation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 27 and divide that by 10. That's going to give me a total of, or a quotient, I should say, of 2.7, okay? Now, if I'm going to approximate my mean absolute deviation to the nearest whole number, that gives me an answer of 3. Okay, so it's just that simple. So at this point, we have three different steps. First of which is to find the mean of my overall data set. Once I've located the mean of my data set, at this point what I would do is I would divide that number by the total number of data points that I have. The total number of data points that I have, again, was 10. Once I divide that out, 59.1, round it to the nearest uh, whole number, 59. And then I'm going to take the distance that each one of these data points is from this approximated mean, add that up, okay? Um, and then once I add those up, I'm going to divide it again by the total number of data points. Mean absolute deviation is approximately three. That is it, you guys. This was a very short video. Thank you again for listening. If you still have a question about this, please come to class with a question in hand. Come to a tutorial session on either Tuesday or Thursday. And as always, I will see you tomorrow.